Hi. So I was asked recently uh, a question on moment of inertia and parallel axis theory. Now I am not an expert on this topic, but I do like to understand it from the point of ship stability and ship's movement. And uh, I can tell you why this is important is uh, because the moment of inertia is helpful in determining how uh, stiff the vessel would be uh, in its movement at sea. All right. So of course, uh, on this at sea, a lot of forces are acting on the vessel. It could be wind, it could be waves, um, and uh, a vessel moves about in different axes. Right now, how stiff will it be in its movement? Because what is inertia? Inertia is the resistance uh, to movement. So what is the law of inertia? A law of inertia says that a body will remain at rest, or if it is in motion, it will continue to be in that motion unless acted upon by a force. Right, so inertia is the resistance to a force. So a ship's stiffness is or resistance to uh, forces experienced at sea uh, is related to moment of inertia. Now, of course, there are other factors as well, such as shape of the hull or overall stability of the ship uh, that contributes to it. But uh, knowledge of moment of inertia and how um, the point mass uh, will behave with respect to the axis uh, of movement helps us in understanding uh, the moment of inertia experienced by the vessel. So in today's video, I will explain uh, the following things. Firstly, I will explain um, uh, just like I just now explained inertia. So I will explain how acceleration uh, is related to inertia because I will explain how if I apply a force to two ships which are of different displacements or different mass or different weights, how do they behave at sea in terms of acceleration? and how it is connected to inertia or resistance to movement. The second thing I will explain is the moment of inertia about uh, rotational motion uh, and how the formula is then derived. And then finally I will explain how that formula of moment of inertia is then used for a ship shaped object uh, to calculate various things such as uh, water plane area or volume or centroid uh, and I will also explain why the parallel axis theorem is introduced and how does it help in the uh, application of the formula. So again like I said I am not an expert on this topic but I only understand it enough uh, so that I can apply it to the ship stability or understanding the ship's movement or why moment of inertia knowledge is important for us as seafarers uh, to understand the ship's behavior at sea. So now let me explain uh, moment of inertia in a rotational motion. All right. Now you see these points here. Yeah, you see the dots here. So let's call this point mass. All right, this point mass here, and this point mass I'll put this on the side here so I can convey the point better. Now this point mass, if need, if it needs to be rotated, I will rotate it like this. Right. Now to calculate its moment of inertia. I will say that it is the weight of that point mass, the mass multiplied by r square. So twice the or square of the distance of the center axis from the point mass. So r is the distance from the center of the axis to the point mass. So square of that multiplied by the point mass mr square will give you the moment of inertia from the center axis or the point mass. Now this in this disk here you can see the mass is distributed equally all over the object. Mass is not concentrated at a point it is distributed all over the object. Now because the mass is distributed all over the object here the moment of inertia is denoted as half of mr square. That's because the more the mass is located towards the or distributed towards the center of the axis lesser is the moment of inertia why because it is easier to then move this object so the object the moment of inertia of any point mass on this object is much lesser because the mass is distributed so it is easier to move the object that is why of a solid disk the moment of inertia is always half mr square moment of inertia of any point from the center of the axis is half mr square Alright, now in the same case, let's take an example of a disc which is hollow. Alright, and you see that point, the blue point there. 
So let's say now I have to rotate this blue point about the center of the axis. Now of course the radius is not the same here. Let's assume the radius is the same here. Now if the radius was same and I'm trying to locate, I'm trying to rotate this uh, blue point similar to the point before. And let's say the axis is passing again through the center of the circular disc. This time the hollow circular disc. You can see that the mass around the circular disc is actually uh, the mass of this circular disc is actually concentrated on the edges. It is not on the center, it is on the edges. So in this case the moment of inertia will be more because the mass is located away from the center of the axis. When the mass is located away from the center of the axis, that is mass is concentrated on the edges of the disc, the moment of inertia is more and in this case the moment of inertia of the point mass m is denoted as mr square. You can say 1 into mr square or mr square. So that is the difference in the moment of inertia of a hollow disc and a circular disc. So if I can say that this is the center of the hollow disc, this distance here from the center to the point mass is r. So the hollow disc will have more moment of inertia for a point mass denoted by m. So the moment of inertia will be i equals mr square, mass of the point mass and the square of the distance from the center to the point mass. So why the moment of inertia is more? Because all the mass is concentrated on the edge and it will take more acceleration to move this object than the other object. That means inertia is more. So let's understand what do I mean by more acceleration required to move this object. Now what do I mean by acceleration and uh, how does the mass of object or mass of you know any mass of object affect the acceleration it faces and how is this related to inertia that we mentioned at the beginning of the video. Alright so here let's say we have two ships right one ship the displacement is 10,000 tons of displacement denoted by triangle and then there is another ship which is 5,000 tons displacement right now both the vessels are now at sea and they are facing strong winds from stern strong winds are hitting the stern all right winds all right let's say the winds are at you know 500 newtons speed both the ships are facing the same situation 500 newtons right now what is acceleration in this case acceleration in this case the vessel's case will be the force it faces divided by the displacement of the vessel so in this case it is 500 by 10,000 which is 0 0.05 all right and in this case it is 500 by 5,000 I think my maths is now taking no oh, it's correct <laughs> sorry 1 by 10 so which is 0 0.1 all right now which is more is 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 now 0 0.1 is more all right so this is more acceleration more acceleration so what does this mean this means that when the mass is less or when displacement is less when mass is less acceleration is more right so a vessel with less displacement when it faces the same force it's easier to accelerate easier to move right that means it has less inertia when it is easier to move 0 0.05 I said it the other wrong it has less inertia correct easier to move right when and this one here the acceleration is lesser because the displacement is more so when mass is more 
acceleration is less that means it's more difficult to move this object that means inertia is more it is resisting to movement inertia is more in this case resisting to movement that is how acceleration and inertia or force is connected as an example on so how does this fit into the simpson's rules or uh, what is the theorem of parallel axis right and why is and knowing all this very important for us as seafarers or as mariners who work on ships now we are talking about moment of inertia now here of course the object was circular and the axis was right in the center in both the cases right so it is something like to keep it simple we'll say the moment was created right at the center right and this is the center of the object this is where the moment was created and that is why we know how to find the moment of inertia denoted by i right now what happens if i want to find the moment of inertia about an axis which is not in the center so this is of course in the center but what happens if there is an object and i want to find the moment of inertia about this point here or this point here or you know some other point so this is where the parallel axis theorem comes into place all right so the parallel axis theorem says that i can calculate the moment of inertia about the center of the object this is the center of the object right but then what can i do is i can add to the moment of inertias i can add to the moment of inertias as i go along i can add to the moment of inertia of any other axis whether it is passing through here or whether it is passing through here by calculating the distance or adding to this distances all right so the, we've got a point of reference so this here becomes the point of reference and i can find the moment of inertia about any axis by saying that i is equal to i know that i is equal to mr square or half mr square whatever is the uh, case b but in this case let's say it is mr square so if i want to find the center about here so then this distance becomes you know this distance is r1 this distance is r2 so on and so forth right so that means i can find about the moment of inertia by the sum total by the sum total of let's say what i don't know mi ri square what does this mean this means is m1 r1 square or m2 r2 square so on and so forth m3 r3 square all right so this all this is m1 m2 so on and so forth all right so the moment of inertia can then be calculated to find about any point of the axis wherever it is located which just we need one point of reference now what happens in uh, in uh, simpson's rules is we take a ship shaped object right now when we take a ship shaped object we have one point of reference all right so let's say we take a ship shape object and we have one point of reference which becomes this point here the coordinate for this is zero and then we divide that water plane area of the ship into equal distances from that point of references now each of this distance is equal we call it h right they are equidistant between each other and these are the ordinates could be um, 1.8 2.6 3.4 uh, 5.3 6.7 and 8 meters all right these are the ordinates 
now what are we doing is we have this here as the point of reference right we have this as the point of reference and we are basically we know that this is equidistant so we know this distance we know this distance we know all these distances so we are using the principles of moment of inertia and applying them in simpson's rules for which we can then calculate the area of the water plane which can then give us also the volume sometimes it also gives us the centroid so on and so forth depends on how you are applying these simpson's rules but this is the basic principle of moment of inertia and parallel axis theorem parallel axis theorem is for when you want to find the moment of inertia around any other of any other point of reference which is not the center point that is the parallel axis theorem or parallel axis theory for moment of inertia because technically we know how to find the moment of inertia of the center point all right